guys, it's Kelly. And today we're going to talk a little bit about rheumatoid arthritis, inflammation and its effects on rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases, and meditation. We'll get to that. It, there is a correlation. So I have a new rheumatologist that I just saw the first time a couple weeks ago. And we're getting to know each other. She's getting to know my issues and my quirks, and I'm getting to know hers. Um, my last rheumatologist retired, which is sad when you built up a relationship with a doctor, but that's the way it goes. She had put me on a steroid to try and get the flare that I've had this winter under control. It's helping with the joints, but it's also made my weight gain, and that's frustrating, but that's something I can deal with. So I'm off the steroid, and my new doctor is a lot younger, and she is really pushing some alternative medicines, which is great. That works well with my philosophy. I'd much rather do that than to take a lot of um, chemicals and a lot of new pills. So we discussed anti-inflammatory diets. We discussed food triggers that have been shown to make rheumatoid arthritis flare. And then we talked about meditation. Again, we're going to get to that. So anti-inflammatory uh, diets. Some of the foods that are known to cause problems with people with rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases are gluten, the nightshade vegetables, and high fructose corn syrup. I know, it's been in the news, then it goes out of the news, and then it comes back. The problem with high fructose corn syrup is that it is made in a factory, and the molecules are not chemically bound, which means your body doesn't have to really work all that hard to digest them, and they get right into your bloodstream really fast. So that causes your autoimmune system to see all that excess sugar and start to react to that. So that's a problem. Um, and then the gluten, even if you're not celiacs, gluten intolerance is prevalent in the United States. We eat way too much of gluten. We eat way too many processed uh, wheat products. So that's something that I really am going to remove from my diet and see how that goes. And then the nightshade vegetables. Now these are, these, this is a problem for me because I love all of them but eggplant. So the ones that are the biggest triggers are tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and eggplant. Of those, I eat the first three a lot. So I'm going to try to reduce that, and I'm going to see how that I feel. Now, nightshade vegetables can be a trigger for some people and not for others. I'm hoping on the, I'm on that other end. So those are the things that I'm going to be doing to um, try to do a little more of an anti-inflammatory diet and eliminate some of that stuff and see how I feel and see how my, my flare, my rheumatoid arthritis reacts to that. So that I'll be working on throughout the next couple of months, just take them out and then add them back slowly and see what happens. So that's how you would do an elimination diet. You remove the food for 30 to 90 days and then introduce one back at a time and assess how you're doing. So that's what I'm gonna be working on. Now meditation. My doctor says that the mindful meditation and really paying attention to your body and spending some time just not really thinking about life, not thinking about work, not thinking about family, just focusing on yourself and how you feel and how things are going in your body. She says it'll help. I have never done meditation successfully. I've tried a few times. It's been a total failure. So I'm going to take you guys along with me on this ride. For this next week, I am going to try to learn to meditate. And I'm going to share that journey with you guys. So please check back because I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. But I'm going to try. So let's see how it goes. I hope you guys check back with me this next week and I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks for listening.